Welcome to Cage Fighter with a difference, because with me is Granite Grant Walton, and also our new young co-promoter, Alfie Best. How you doing, Alfie? And the fighter of the year, Tony the Rhino the Giles. Rhino. How you doing, Rhino? Now, Tony, you've got your big fight coming up here, the biggest fight of your career, the biggest fight, but you've been in the cage, in the ring, on the street, in the gypsy camps, you've had probably over a hundred fights. You've never been seventy two. All, all, I lost one out of seventy two, and that's MMA semi pro. But stand up, I've never lost stand up fight. Never out, lost, so never seventy one wins. The world. I've been knocked down plenty of times. Never been knocked out in my life. It don't matter how, how many times you get knocked down. Yeah, I've been knocked down. You back get up. back up. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And that's what it's all about. Exactly. Now, Grant, yeah. uh, you've refereed Tony. You've seen Tony. What do you think the chance is? How hard is he training for this fight? You know, if I if I'm going to analyse it, I, I'm not going to sit here and uh, blow smoke up your up your backside, uh, Tony. You know, you've got your work cut out here. Yeah, I know. Um, Alex Reed, in his day, was world class. Uh, he comes from a kickboxing background. He's bigger than you. He's got more reach. But the thing that Tony's got is supreme heart. supreme confidence. I don't know if it's just heart. He's got supreme confidence. Really believes in himself. Um, you know, for someone who doesn't train as hard as perhaps you should have done in the past, you've got loads of gas. Um, well, I showed a little sneaky picture to Dave earlier on, so for once, for once, I'm putting it right in on this it's one. It's the first right. time so, yeah. I've seen you with a six pack. Right. I've never my, seen him with a six pack. My problem at the minute is. I'm, I'm, I'm 80 kilos, 81 kilos at the minute. Alex walking about 93 kilos, whatever he is. I don't care. I'm quite happy being under 84 kilos. That does not even bother me as long as I feel the way I do at the minute. Yeah, People yeah. keep saying to me about this fight, wait, oh, he's bigger than you, he's stronger than you. Right, that's some of the advantages that he's got. That ticks his box. I'm younger, I'm faster, and I can bang as well. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. it's going to be a good fight. Uh, Listen, I'm not going to sit here and run her down. I mean, run him down. <laughs> right, I'm not going to do run that. Down. All right. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. I was going to say, sitting with me is also young Alfie Best, 18 years of age. You own a Ferrari. You own a nightclub. You've now come on board with me to co-promote this event. I don't know. How to I am on. not jealous. I, I'm yeah. not jealous either. <laughs> but Alfie, what's it like? You've known Tony for many years. You're related to Tony. You know, what's it like going to promote this fight? I think it's great. Um, it's going to be a, a fairly easy fight to promote. It's going to be a great fight. I think Tony's going to win it, to be fair. Well, you're a little bit biased over there, aren't you? I'd like pay him to say that. <laughs> I mean, looking at you, you're looking at it, you know, you're an entrepreneur, you're hugely successful at such a young age. Um, I mean, I, I wouldn't have said, you know, are you stepping out of your comfort zone, moving into promoting uh, mixed martial arts? Um, but you've been involved in the fight game. Yeah, at, I used to box. I boxed from when yourself. I was about six. But I weren't boxing uh, carded. I was only training up till I was 11, then I started boxing. I'd done it till I was uh, 14, and I'd give up and just started back again. But, but having a gypsy background, you've been around fight fight organised yeah. fighting. You know. Right, stop everybody. God, it's getting too much for me. We talk, talk, talk. Let's have a look at what Tony Giles is all about. Take a look at this. <laughs> Already a slower start from Tony Giles, a lot more methodical. We're going to find the range. As I say that, he comes firing nice in with a lot shots. of big shots. Oh. Finish you straight to the canvas right in front of our position. Don't know whether that was a knockdown or a slight slip. Whatever it was, they were powerful punches. Tony Giles smells blood. Closing down the distance straight away. And Slice is just covering up. You get the Slice just cannot fight like that. You cannot just cover up. Charles nice taking the centre. With a different part of his arsenal. I haven't seen him throw the kicks that much of late. It's impressive to see him really mixing it up. He's known for those thunderous hands. Slash just needs to let something go. Yeah, I don't he's got to throw something. Shot. You can't run constantly, he's got to throw something. He's got to at least put Tony Giles to think about something. Throwing lots of feints, but nothing. Actually, conviction. Oh, there we go. Clyde's just throwing a keg, but not keeping his hands up. He's oh, really struggling. He gets dropped again. One, two, well, I think Tony Giles is three, right. Silicius, I bet he still wishes he would miss the win here. Silicius being counted out if we don't get up soon. Jumps up with the 
Arush, you want to carry on? No, okay. So he's just surely must realise he's got to come forward a little bit more. He's got to throw punches. He's he's faking the hips and you know, but he's not faking anybody. Tony Giles has been here before. He's comfortable on his feet. He knows what he's doing and he knows he's going to drop this man one more time. But for Tony Giles, the important thing is he's fighting this fight at his pace. No holding, no hold, guys. Well, all we've seen is Silicius has throw kicks. That's right, he's yet to unleash a combination, as I said, that Giles storms the fence. Those look heavy, those punches. The, the, you know what, I was just thinking exactly that, Ben. I wouldn't like to be on the end of one of them punches, especially with MMA gloves on. No use for a jab. Oh, and as he sits him down once again. It's over, it's, it's all over. It's over, it's a win for Tony Giles. That makes it number nine. Dominant fashion from Giles, he knew exactly what he needed to do. And Sleech, just when he did come forward, was eating punches and punches, another one sends him down. And the one that finished it off, I believe this is gonna be. Those huge combinations, nice mixing it up to the body there. The body's nice. There's the fact that he didn't give his man any room to set, anything like that. Giles just came forward, he clipped him with a shot. Wow, well that just shows you the power. And again, as we said to Alex earlier on, you know, you come out the stable door, you don't muck around, you're just straight at it. You're looking for the head, you're looking for the knockout. And that could be the upset of the fight, you know, because Alex is slow, he comes out a million well, miles an hour. Would you say, is your power underestimated? A little bit, I'll show you the, the, the way I like fighting. If you notice from my fights, one time I come out like a ball, another time I move around. <laughs> one time I come out like a ball, another time, it's, it's how I feel on the night. And I feel with Alex's fight, I've got, I've got nothing to lose with this fight. No. Alex is, uh, he's beat, every, as everyone knows, Lee, uh, Lee Murray, he's beat John Maguire, he's beat Jake Boswick, he's beat Jack Mason. Jack Mason. Yeah. On and on, yeah, the list goes on and on and on. So I've got nothing to lose. So I'm not going to go out there and try to win the fight. I'm going to go out there and I'm going to win the fight. I'm going to stand in the middle of the cage. I'm going to stand in vain. As simple as that. I'm lighter than him. He's heavier than me. He should have no problem in that. Stand in vain. That's exactly. You, you say, that's how, that's yeah. how I feel. If, if I'm going to hit UFC, Tom Conn wants to went distance with him. If I'm going to make an impression, if I'm going to, if I'm going to let him, the, the only way to do it is to stand there and stand in vain. I mean, that is it. If he bangs, so, if you knock out Alex yeah. Reed, that is my that is you a from zero. Yeah. To hero, but, and they, but I'm not. I'm, I'm be signing him up. <laughs> I, must, I must be. So, I must say this now about Alex. Uh, it's going to be the hardest fight that I've had to yeah, date. 100%. Not, uh, not the hardest fight I've ever had in my life, but the hardest fight in the cage at the profession. What I'm doing, as Alfie will tell you, what people don't understand is the way I've fought all through my life. This is why Alfie's behind me and everyone's backing me. I've done bare knuckle fighting for how many years, Alfie? Five, six years. I'd have said longer, but yeah. Yeah, I never lost a fight. I was fighting two a, a day. There's no weight category. Just, just it's around, outside. It's a bit of a I wish to God that I went, if I go back and change it now, I would. All right, that's it. I'll put my, I'll put my gloves up and I wish I was a lawyer. I'd have more money and more friends. We all? all right, but that's the pathway I went down. So once I've been in that sort of pathway, because I know that there's a fee at the end of it and I know that I've got to do that to do it, so if the pressure's on a little bit. So that's how it feels like with this fight. But that's like the fighting game, but let's talk about what he's doing, climbing the mountain, like Cheryl, uh, Cheryl Cole done, and now you're moving into that celebrity status where you know, you're doing stuff for kids but and the, for just, cancer. Everybody. Just to mention that, yeah, that, that, you're climbing a mountain for a pancreatic cancer action, yeah. which... It, yeah. it's, in, it's in April, it's uh, Africa, 10 days, we'll, uh, trek up to the top of a mountain, um, trek back down it again. Um, there's a few of us doing it. Um, it's a relation of mine again. Little Bobby Butcher, his mum died, young lady of it. So if there's anything I could do, my dad, 49 years of age, a few months ago he died. Um, so that's why I'm doing all the charity as much as I can, take my mind off what happened and also put some good back into there's it. There's a, well, there's a lot of hype around this fight. There's obviously a business side of it. There's money trying to be made and promote the sport, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's a huge amount of good. You know, Alex is raising yeah. money for charity. Fair you play mentioned too. you mentioned something about your purse. We're uh, putting we're putting the purse towards charity for this fight for kids with cancer. Yeah. I feel like I'm changing as a person a, a little bit. So after this fight with Alex, um, well, who knows what's going to happen in the future? <laughs> okay, so that's the nice side of Tony. Wow. Let's see <laughs> Mr. Horrible. This is Tony Giles again, knocking somebody out. Oh, 
Oh, big swing by Giles. First opening punch was a big over, big overhand right. Oh, and a cut straight away. Oh, yeah, you can see it. Oh, oh nice and there's another hook. shot from Giles. He's landed that left hook quite cleanly. And Nemeth here come the punches. again. Nemeth, Nemeth is really is struggling with this power. Giles, relentless with those shots. Beautiful body Ooh. shot. Nemeth oh, had enough. Nemeth says he's had enough. And that oh is it. Oh, my God. Wow. Tony Giles storms the gates. With power, precision. Beautiful left hands connecting every time. Peter Nemeth just couldn't take the power. Blasted his way to victory. And here we see the replay from the very start. First punch, a sweeping right hand. Giles caught his man and Nemeth from there was backing up and that first right hand cut him. Well, it was downhill all the way for Peter Nemeth from here. Beautiful left, who catches him? The power, look at the strength. Tony Giles connecting with every shot. Working the body, working the head. And it was from here when the referee stepped in. He was giving him a standing eight count. But Peter Nemeth says, I've had enough. Well, it just shows you, bosh! Tony does it again, out from the stable door. And he was a big guy, Nemeth ain't no small dude. He come out, bump, 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 the party's over. So, and again, yeah. Alfie, you said you started back training again. Is it because you watch him, he's going, you know what, a bit of inspiration, I'm going to get the gloves on again, start hitting the pads? It was when I got back into it. I've come and watched him fight a couple of times. I've come up to the cage fight and it just fires you up, doesn't it? And you just want to be involved. And I, that's yeah. why I wanted to be involved. That's why I've started coping right. And I just wanted to be involved in the event. There's that's an energy, isn't there? There's an energy about fight shows, isn't there? It, yeah. it's, uh, the atmosphere. You, could do, a lot of, you it, it, could do a lot of things in life, but running a fight show makes you really happy. Listen, I love all these guys. <laughs> all we got to take, take a break. Shut up. We'll see you soon. Welcome back to Cage Fighter. Tony Giles, entrepreneur, and my little mate, <laughs> Granite Grant Bottom. <laughs> now, we've talked a lot about your power, but Alex Reed has got knockout power. I mean, when he fought Jake Brutal Boss Week, it just shows you the power he got. Now, before we, we talk about your condition and what you're doing, have a look at Alex Reed taking on Jake Boss Week. Okay, guys, here we come. Here we go, three rounds, UK one rules. Any questions for me? Remember, there's no clinch. Protect yourselves at all times. Listen to my words of command at all times. If I say stop, you stop. If I tell you to break or stop during the fight, go to a neutral corner, not your own corner. Touch gloves, get ready for war. Rob, if you right look back. at these two guys, Grant should get ready for war. This is called Ultimate Challenge Heat, and the heat has really been turned up for this one. Both of them giving it the big stare down before this starts. I really think this one could be fireworks. Three twos, it's a sprint. Okay, go, these guys. men are used ready? to more, so ready? I think they will come out flying straight away. And Jake does with a big overhand right, and he's swinging some heavy-handed shots. Alex Reed covers up well. Good inside uppercut from Alex Reed. Yeah, Jake's got to be careful. He doesn't want to blow himself out with the big bombs like that unless he lands cleanly, because Alex is tucking up there. The some body shots will shot. take their toes though, Rob. Jake Boswick, I feel, landing the cleaner shots at the moment. Good Big near attempt by Alex Reed. Oh, and a right hand there, Rob. You could hear the snap from that. Again, Reedy really swinging with those hooks. I think Jake's got to be careful, Rob. I think Jake's got to be careful. He doesn't expend too much early. Oh, it's a big thing. A huge knee from Alex Reed out of nowhere, Rob. And the count Three. for Jake Boswick. Four. A real shot there. Five. He felt that one. Six. Boswick in trouble. It's over. That Alex is a real Reed. shot, Rob. A real shot. Alex Reed defending his title in great style. I mean, it was a great finish. There's no two ways about it. He sets him up for the knee and it comes straight to the channel on the eye. That's right. You can't fault the finish, Rob. There's no faulting it at all. And he originally, after this finish here again, you see it from the reverse angle. Jake goes down. It's hard, it's heavy, it's hurtful. Wow. I mean, a knee right up the pipe. Bosh. Jake Boswick's out. I mean, he's good with his knees, isn't he? Yeah, he's good with his knees. Now, Tone, it's does that yoga. worry you in the slightest? Listen, this fight, I will be quite honest with you, there's not one bit of worry in it. It's excitement more than anything. And when I go in here, I'm getting in here with, he's been in the UFC, Ultimate Fighter else, everything else, what he's done. I'm really looking forward to it. And for once, I'm going to be able to actually show people what I can do. 
I mean, and you... at the end of the day, if, if Alex beats me, uh, or if Alex knocks me out or whatever, I'm, I'm undefeated, I will shake his hand, that's it. We will walk to the bar, we will all get drunk. Really there's cool. there's going to be no world. bad blood about it whatsoever. Oh. But uh, I am one, I am one track minded from this fight. I'll tell you something, in something interesting. It, you watch that fight with uh, Jake Boswick and Alex Reed. If you put those two guys side by side and put them on the pads, Boswick will scare you. Yeah, exactly. Uh, his, his power is phenomenal. You know, kicks and punches, but his hooks, you know, are, but are crazy. Jake was very young at that age. How old was he? He was 18 or 19 years and of age. Accuracy, time, and experience. Exactly. Experience is one of the factor. main things. Yeah. Experience is one of the main things. As I say, Alex has got the experience. That's why I'm excited because I know that I've got a bit of experience as well. Alex is expecting me to walk out there and stand on my back foot, pick my punches, use my boxing skills, and all that. So I'm going to tell him now and tell everyone now it ain't going to be like that. Alex, stand the bang, buddy. You're stand going to war. Let's just, just have it. Alfie, you've been conditioning Tony. How have you been conditioning him? Unique oh. gypsy conditioning. Yeah. Yeah. Unique gypsy rib. style. Hashtag the gypsy. I was over at Tony <laughs> and uh, um, he said, oh, I want to do a bit of training. And he said, take him on the pads. I was holding the bag, but he was getting spiteful. So I said, leave this, leave this. I'm not doing it because the kicks was going right from. I thought if he missed, he's going to take my jaw off. So I said, he said, come on, I want to do a bit of conditioning. I Tell thought with a medicine. It was a toenail, wasn't it? Like a yeah, Dorito. You know. He's a bit scared. <laughs> Um, you got a baseball bat. So we got a baseball bat and I wouldn't have been able to get it. And I was getting spiteful as well. I was getting spiteful. Uh, how was this? Well, just describe. Uh, I, well, I put, put, I put my hands over my head. I was going through my ribs first, underneath my ribs. I didn't think he was going to do it as hard as what he did. Literally swinging it like he, like he was <laughs> one of the Yankees. Um, <laughs> so I thought, I can't lose face. It's my little cousin and I'm supposed to be this bitch. So I can't on. lose face. <laughs> Then we went on to the legs, and I thought, yeah, I can really take it on the legs. I said, try and break the bat. Oh, my God, did he try breaking that bat? But we'd done it four times, we did. And what was we doing it? We was uh, four times, we was doing it, um, four sets we'd done. So we was doing the conditioning where he beat me all up and down all parts of the body. Then I'd do a circuit. Beat me up and down, do a circuit. I mean, and that, as you know me, Dave. That is old school, that mate. That's, I, that's, I, that's I didn't do that much him. training last year. The whole of last year, I don't think I'd done that much training. Uh, that, so. that, is, that is going old school, but as you say, people go, He's really hard. And people never used to go, what do you mean really hard? That is, that's what it means about hard, because our arms used to be like metal bars. Condi you know, conditioning, conditioning is very underestimated. Even if you can really fight, if you don't spar and exactly. condition leading up to a fight, exactly. and your body's like a pudding, exactly. you get a body shot, yeah. it's game over, isn't it? You know? I'll tell you what, let's take a look at what Tony can take, because Jimmy Miller really put you through your paces. I still think that was one of your toughest fights. Yeah. If you if you know though, Dave, we had that fight at seventy seven kilos. No. I you, can't you do. Were dead on that. Yeah, you were dead on that, when I yeah. come to that weigh in the night the day before, I was seventy nine kilos, and that killed me to get down to that weight. You got to remember, I fought I, I fought um, oh, what's his name, Sean Lomez, and he was ninety three kilos. We ended up having the fight at eighty eight kilos. So I've gone from eighty eight to seventy seven. It's, it was a drop. Weight cutting underestimated. I hate it. I don't like fighters doing it. But without further ado. Shall I slap you? No. <laughs> Shall I slap him? <laughs> this is Jimmy Miller taking on the Rhino. You might expect with strikers like this. Oh, Miller connects with the left straight. Good work by Miller. Three Grant Waterman going in to break the fight there. Miller landed that shot nicely. That's right, Miller with green hair. Yeah, Miller with green hair. And Giles with the with, with whatever he's wearing. Giles looking to counter five, but Miller comes in nicely underneath there and lands a shot. He's parrying that. I don't think Giles has threw a punch yet without intention. And the kicks. With 20 seconds left and it's the first round. Oh, nice three there by beautiful. Miller. Found a home as well. But could Giles keep up this pace? This is strong from the onset. Can he throw every punch with power for the full duration of this fight? Oh! Huge shot. Claret there and ahead of Tony Giles. And there's that huge shot. That really caught Miller. It did, it rocked him a little bit. Miller went for the shoot there. Oh, I thought he did, I thought he went for the double. <laughs> <laughs> but look at Jazz loading up every time that Miller comes forward. But it's working for him, and it's working well. Straight over the top. 
Oh, and there's that nice punch following. Giles has thrown everything, and there's a big left. Miller looking to weather the storm as Giles landed that flush, that left hook. Hats off to Miller, he's taken a few big shots. A little bit sloppy. Oh, and there's that right hand. Giles obviously got punching power, he just needs to really set his punches up a little better. Miller soaking up some of these shots. And the right hand's coming a oh, bit more telegraph. with the left hand. It's a nice kick, and neither fighter really made use of the kicks. It's been a real spit and sawdust encounter in a lot of respects. Real gritty fighters, and a real test of heart for both guys. Declaring your winner by unanimous decision, and still undefeated, fighting out of the red corner, Tony the Rhino Giles! Wow, a decision. It's not often that Tony Charles gets a decision. Normally, he's banging them out. A, MMA, a W is a W. The win's a winner at the end of the night. But that was one of your hardest fights. I do remember sitting there going, cool, he's going for his paces. But he hit you, but no matter how hard he hit you, you kept coming back. Exactly. You know, I, I, I like Jimmy, and he, Jimmy was a brawler. So he came out there and he wanted to brawl, but Jimmy knew the day before how bad I was trying to lose that weight. I was completely, he knew that he, he knew he had to that come was, to me and suck it to me. But I, I, I do believe if I would have knew what I knew now about rehydration and everything like that, as I say, for your experience it's a learning, again, it's a learning yeah, thing. I feel like I would have done, like I would have definitely knocked him out. But fair play to him, it's good. I like it. It gives the fans more to watch anyway. Of course it does. But this they're, they're gypsy, ten second that wears a onesie. <laughs> The Rhino. Hashtag the, the Rhino. Right, hashtag the Rhino. I'm learning all this young that, stuff. Hashtag you, the Rhino. You, you mentioned earlier as well, you know, about the amount of times you've been knocked down and you've got back up. And this no surrender attitude is what a true fighter needs. Isn't at, it? At, at, you know, at the end of the day, Grant, a when fight's, you're gassing, a, a, fight's well, a fight. Yeah, Put it all in there. And you've got to remember, if a K1 fight, three, uh, three, three minutes round, in nine minutes' time, it'll all be over. Yeah. So if in them nine minutes, you're a warrior for nine minutes. Yeah. So it's either you be a warrior or you be a ballet dancer, one or the other. <laughs> but like Makunga the other night, he was. I've never seen. He should have had an Oscar for what he was doing in that cage. But we're not talking about him anyway. Yeah. It's all about you. It's all about me. Listen, young Alfie Best. Pleasure work with you, young man. Yeah. You really. This is what we need for the sport. Tony Love Giles. You, Alfie. Tony Giles. Dave, Thank you again. Grant Wong. Yeah. From Granite Grant Walton, the young entrepreneur from the Rhino. We'll see you next time on Cage Fighter. Cage Fighter, the warrior, you know you're unbelievable. Cage Fighter.